In a series of real side experiences I shared previously, I would reveal a method that the dark forces utilize as a means of disruption and interference. On the real side, as indeed it is on the physical, or anywhere we happen to have our awareness view placed, if we are still operating in a creation, a necessity, until we have recognised the years through the comparison that everything creational provides, we will be as though two beings simultaneously. We are the real awareness, our true being states, part of the isness everything we are to recognise, but the means of recognition is made possible through the created simulators. And as the real awareness animates body forms within them, so eventually the emergence of a secondary self becomes a so. Until a certain point, a certain body form, although operating within a creation, the real awareness is directly animating through the consciousness affected body forms. As such, each body type, the various insect, animal forms and so forth, although they will have a certain consciousness programs running that dictate behaviour specific to whatever the species happens to be, it is almost as though automatic. There is no actual conscious consideration, choice or intent applied, as the real awareness simply is. It is the everything reality, and from such a position, nothing segregated from the whole is manifested, no thought, emotion, or idea. It would be so then, that the real awareness, this everything reality, also is a viewing through the mechanics of its body form, as the simulation of what is effected from a consciousness, overall the entirety of the simulator's multi-dimensional nature is made available. Like a computer game operator, viewing the scenes and situations as made available on the screen, through the eyes of the character he is playing in the game. However, the real awareness is no closer to recognising the ears, despite now viewing through its created avatar into the creational realm its created vehicles are operating within. As I said earlier, the established method of recognising the ears is through a comparison, comparing the ears, the everything a reality, to that which isn't. And the only thing that can't be everything must be something, isolating a piece from the whole. And although we have then the real awareness viewing through the creational mechanics of the body forms, the simulation of a creation, a reality that isn't what the is is, for anything that can be observed in isolation cannot be an everything reality, as with the isness there can be nothing that presents as segregation, isolation, or individuality of a form or feature, despite then the comparison available via the two realities, the isness and the created simulator realms, the real awareness maintains itself as that which it is, as its own isness reality, the nowness of itself. A further step is required, one where a certain body form is assumed as the process continues with the ability to wield free will. 
For up until now, the body forms had been running automatically based on their consciousness programs. Lions being lions, elephants being elephants and so forth. But now, the real awareness utilises this free will to generate ideas via the body vehicles, thought, emotion, etc. As ideas are created, as opposed to just remaining in the nowness of the everything reality of itself, so these are formulated pieces, segregated realities, aside from the whole, a position other than the everything is this position, and this other position, made so through the free will utilising of the body form's mechanics to generate thought and emotion, is referenced as the personal self. For it's one thing for the real awareness to operate through a body forms where a reality is made available as a comparison to the ears. But if the real awareness retains its indifference to a creation, nowness standing as it will, then as I said, it is no closer to recognising the ears, but with the ability now to move into a position which isn't the nowness everything of the isness reality, a secondary personal self position, and experiencing the effects, the pieces of the ideas generated through the body of vehicles, so therein lies the comparison, the personal self reality, and the real awareness everything position, and now we are as effectively two beings as we operate in a creation. As we switch between the two, creating the ideas and being removed from the nowness of our true being states, then a ceasing free will idea generating and returning to the real awareness position, we have then our comparison as every idea generated, every affected moment of a personal self-standing position can then be compared to the real awareness, everything a position. As Duane has suggested, the utilising of the sun as a reference to a compare with every idea we free will create. Generally then, the personal self tends be over-utilised. We remain for increasing durations within the reality of the secondary self, and as the lifetimes go by, we tend to forget the real awareness, our true being states, and the purpose of the simulators, that of recognising the ears. And then comes the moment where the real awareness motivates its personal self, which by now has become as though a being in its own right, as though a puppet that thinks it is real, and as the personal self gets on board with the real purpose, is recognition, so a re-establishing of the real awareness position, recognising how to assume the nowness of its reality, becomes a so, and then utilising all of the consciousness of collated ideas as comparable references, along with any other ideas we continue to generate, to recognise the ears by, along with the process of releasing attachment to the consciousness. Many created idea agreements will have an emotional component, but we come to recognise that all agreements are fabricated on reality, and the emotion applied to them is as created as anything else, merely sensations as generated 
via the astro a body form. For to stand as the real awareness we actually are, we must be as we once were, when we were operating as the body forms, prior to a body type where free will was made available, and with all the idea agreements we had created in the meanwhile, progressively attached with and held to, with the millions of lifetimes where we were operating as the personal self only, a case then of a going backwards in a sense, dismantling the illusory layers of agreement, and as we once again are able to stand in the nowness of our real awareness true being states, as we did in the beginning, the real awareness also has now a wealth of experience of lifetimes and comparable references, and whatever further simulated experiences are required to recognise the ears by. And on the real side, as we operate in the nowness of the real awareness, everything taking place is to this end, the recognising of the ears. Everything we do will make sense in regards to awareness then. And as such, there is nothing the dark forces can do that can interfere with this process. As they can't touch the real awareness, and with all a simulation in a creation, real side and physical, rolling out as effected from the real intent set for ears recognition, if this intent is maintained, simulation must follow, and the outcome is a foregone conclusion, despite the dark forces best disruptive efforts. We move into the personal self as we utilise the mechanics, the literal parts, etc., where required. But if we maintain a personal self positioning, as we remain activating thought, consideration, attitudes, emotion, and so forth, we actually remove ourselves momentarily from this real awareness is a recognising objective. For the personal self will be as we have designed it, and as we move into it, we are re-embracing its consciousness a construct, and to remain embracing it for too long, we run the risk of falling back into it, a tightrope situation for sure as we must still use the body form mechanics as we operate in a creation, but the idea is not to stay there, to not overindulge the personal self-position, for not only are we removed from now our real intent is objective by doing so, but we lose our ability of discernment, the personal self, can only draw its conclusions from what is visually and literally presented on the surface, whereas the real awareness is the everything reality that is through all consciousness and has access to all idea and intent that is behind and affects the simulated surface, including the body forms we encounter, etc., Without the real awareness impressions, which won't be available if we wallow in the personal self, we are effectively blind, and in any situation on the real side, we only will have whatever personal consciousness abilities we have developed to deal with any and all adversity of a situation. Whereas the real awareness is a reality beyond a limitation, as such it can utilise its assimilated body forms in whatever ways are necessary and required, assuming there are no unreleased agreements 
that might in some way present as a blocks to the effectiveness of the real awareness. With all of that, so we can see, the dark forces will have a general objective of maintaining every being as their personal self. As they are more vulnerable, they can't see through the deceptive surface fronts and will not be embracing their real intent is recognising a purpose. And for those on their awareness processes, so the dark forces cannot in reality derail such a process. As the deciders, it is us then who derail ourselves, and the dark forces can only step into the roles we have made available. The best the dark forces can hope to achieve is to pull us into the personal self, and as I said in the beginning, they utilise a particular method for this, as I have shared on a previous real side experiences. For as we activate emotion or thought, we become as the personal self. As we maintain thought and emotion activation, so we remain as the personal self. The dark forces then overall seek to maintain everyone in a states of thought and emotion activation. They continuously endeavour to elicit reaction from the masses through that which they create. And for the individual that the dark forces seek to have decide to derail themselves, they create on the real side situations that they determine will best elicit emotional response and draw them into then the personal self. One of the preferred methods they use is that of presenting a past lifetimes where I had made a poor and destructive of myself and others life choices, as they were replaying scenes from these past lifetimes that such created emotions of guilt and shame can be the result. For not only will such emotional response pull you into the personal self, but make you more agreeable to anything that alleviates them. Guilt is rather a powerful, manipulative tool if it can be successfully triggered. Although, as they would continue to use such tactics, I would become better able to remain indifferent to what they revealed to me, the indifference of the real awareness position, a position they would be seeking to draw me from. As such, it was as though, for a number of months, they abandoned then this method, as it was a failing to be effective. But the dark forces are nothing but predictable, and so it was that on this real side experience, they would attempt this method again. For I would be approached now by a group of individuals, and it seemed they were attempting to elicit emotional response from me, through a taunting and provoking. It was as though they realised that to attack me would be futile. As I said, as we operate in the nowness of our real awareness, our simulated forms tend be rather indomitable on the real side. I had the impression that were I to be pulled into the personal self, so the experience in relation to this dark force attempted disruptive effort would proceed. But if I did not, then nothing would occur much beyond this scene of being provoked and taunted. And sometimes we will be put through what seems rather a harrowing experience, as that is what is required to build our resolve that we can continue. Or perhaps 
as on this occasion, I would recognise that the choice was to either remain indifferent to the situation and halt it in its tracks, or proceed with it. For experience, regardless of its nature, is just that, further comparable a reference to recognise the ears by, and really then it is prudent to be open to it all. And so I pretended as though the individuals were having effect. I mimicked emotional response, that of a rage, as though acting in a movie, while perpetuating my real awareness nowness position. I would even hurl one of the individuals across the scene, but interestingly, through my real awareness, the individuals all seemed as though cardboard cutouts. They were not even actual beings, as impressions revealed, as though projections generated by the dark forces, that in reality, even if I bestowed harm upon them, I wouldn't actually be harming anything other than as though a holographic image. For the dark forces intended that I not only succumb to the taunting, but that I react with aggression in response to what were as though animated holograms. And so it was, as though I went along with what they were hoping would be the result. In actuality, a pretense of my being pulled into my personal self. Additionally, would they then bombard me with imagery of my past lifetime misdeeds, just as they had done before? And although I maintained my real awareness indifference to the situation, I once again mimicked emotional responses of guilt and shame. The curious projected forms vanished, the purpose they served fulfilled, although, from the personal self perspective, they may have looked very convincing as actual beings, and into the scene would enter a group of humans, expressions of the dark forces, and that were highly placed within a secret societies of the earth. They would tell me that as I was incapable of maintaining my real awareness position, that I was so easily pulled from it, I may as well forfeit my process of awareness, and they suggested that to join with them, so would all the guilt in association with my past life misdemeanours evaporate. Little did they know or recognise that I had in fact remained indifferent to their efforts, but as I said, if I were to play along, so would the experience unfold as opposed to not going beyond the initial taunting effort. I would agree to their suggestions, though in actuality I was now playing the role as the deceptor, and they were the ones hoodwinked. As such, I would be accepted into their secret societies, but in reality I had extended no actual agreement that this be so. The only agreement was in regards to that which was facilitating and effecting what I was experiencing, as though I had signed a contract with a false name. But regardless, any agreements we make, we can simply relinquish the agreement and terminate that which effects from it. And now, would the group of human dark force beings gesture to an approaching a car? A very expensive black car at that, it pulled up beside us, and emerging from it would be the Queen of England, the one recently transitioned, though looking exactly as she had done on the physical, prior to the death of her physical body. 
She would, as though, scan me, determining any ruse on my part. But where I had the ability to draw upon impressions via a real awareness that is through and has access to all ideas and intent of a consciousness, she had now a recognition of her real awareness a true being, and so was limited to what she could discern through what was presented on the simulated surface. My real awareness was providing the perfect, Oscar-deserving act for its simulated, created self, and as a consequence, the Queen could determine no deception on my part. I would address her with respect, as she would have demanded such from all who served her, or she perceived as those serving her, as she was a reptilian who had assumed a very highly placed position on the earth, and so in reality all earth-bound secret dark force societies would answer to her and those of a similar position as herself, though she too would have her superiors, etc. I then spent the rest of the real side experience observing the activities of these secret societies, predominantly how the particular group who had approached me were highly placed as they were, that they had a great influence that extended throughout all aspects of human society. Nothing really new there, information-wise, but it was interesting to see it as though first-hand, as they manipulated everything. They had their hand in every created situation, be it political, through the science and education systems, etc. They would have their usual dark force secret society meetings, and where the gatherings were those incorporating only the more highly positioned society members, so would in addition to humans be present reptilians in their full lizard forms, and various other alien body types of an equally as ill-intended persuasion. There also seemed to be among them humans that were immune to harm, as they would delight in encouraging me to strike them, and as I did, my impacts had no effect. They didn't even cause a bruising or any indication of abrasion. These humans would simply grin at me. I had the impression these were some kind of robot or android, though ones that were not only remarkably resilient, but that were unmistakable from a genuine human body form. So sophisticated were they, suggesting and verifying the very real suspicion that walking among us now are robots of this nature, that blend in perfectly, through being impossible to identify as the actual synthetic forms they are. Also would be a present beings that although appeared human, what set them apart would be the oversized heads that they had, that protruded as though more snout-like, and they boasted sets of razor-sharp teeth. But there the experience would end. As I said, I was playing the part of the newly assumed Dark Force member, but not one of the various Dark Force beings and body types would realise I was deceiving them in this regard. This would ultimately, as all experiences will, simply provide more comparisons, more created ideas and simulated situations to recognise the years by, with the various beings making their choices and so forth. But it does reveal the limitations 
of the dark forces' awarenesses. They were incapable of ascertaining that I was faking my allegiance with them, reiterating how that absent of the ability to stand as and access real awareness impressions, creation would be very difficult to navigate through. For what we see on the surface is rarely the reality of what it actually is, the intent that affects it, etc., and very easy then to be duped, manipulated, and drawn into untoward agreement. Ultimately then, far easier, cleaner, and more sense must it make to effectively agree with nothing creational wise, but simply utilise the mechanics of it that provide a benefit, awareness speaking, and rather than sidestep all created ideas as we proceed, eventually to get through it all, to play with whatever ideas we decide, as nothing is negated, but to see them for what they are, that which isn't real, and to not cling to, or carry any of them with us, through the application of emotion. Of course now, the dark forces would have realised I had duped them in this experience. Rather amusing that they are on the receiving end for a change, and no doubt my temporary position in their secret societies is now vanquished, but it certainly was rather entertaining to play-act the role and deceive them, as after all, every time we engage with them in whatever capacity we do, we are getting their attention. What we are presenting, the ears, will feature in their experience as a result, and even if they have no interest through their personal selves at this moment, under their created filters of attitude and consciousness, is a real awareness that does recognise the value of the ears relating references, and sometimes all it takes is a spark through our interactions with others to set them on their own real purposes of ears recognition.